All right. So last thing we'll take a look at um, are the Pythagorean identities, um, which are three more formulas to add to the ones I already gave you. Um, so I gave you guys the reciprocal ones. There's really only three. We did six, but I showed you that the other three were repeats. Just, just writing the same thing a different way. So there's three reciprocal. There's two in the middle group. That's like the sine over cosine equals tangent, and cosine over sine equals cotangent. And then there's three in this group. Now, when you think of the Pythagorean uh, theorem, what, what exponents come up a lot in the Pythagorean theorem? Square, right? So all these identities are going to have things squared. Right? We're going to have, we're going to have uh, three identities, and we have six trig functions. So we're going to have two trig functions in each identity. Okay. Here's the first one. It has a sine and a cosine. And it says that sine squared plus cosine squared always equals 1. Again, it's not important. Well, sine squared of what? 10 degrees, 12 degrees, 15 degrees, anything. It doesn't matter. You can take any angle you want. Take the sine and square it. Take that same angle, cosine and square it. Add them up, and you always get 1. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Now, I'm going to write that down here for a second. And I want to do something I, I, um, I showed you yesterday. Yeah, I think I, I used this yesterday. It's the basic formula, distance equals rate times time. And I did something like this. Is that a different formula than the one above it? No, it's the same formula rearranged. So let's look at this one. Cosine squared equals 1 minus sine squared. Is that a different formula? No, it's the same formula rearranged. All I did was take this and subtract it from each side. I moved it over to the right. So I'm not going to write every single identity, every single possible way you can rearrange it, because then that, that, there's a lot, right? But I can do that. I could also do this. Sine squared equals 1 minus cosine squared. That's the same thing written every possible way you can write it. With the 1 by itself, cosine squared by itself, and the sine squared by itself. Okay. To get these other two, I just subtracted one of them to the other side. Okay, so that's the trickiest thing we have to look for. You might see a problem with that in it, 1 minus sine squared. And you have to remember, okay, well, it's a 1 and it's a sine squared. All right, so it's this first identity just rearranged a little bit. Okay, so that's the trickiest thing we have to look for. Okay, here's our um, second Pythagorean identity. 1 plus cotangent squared equals cosecant squared. And you can rearrange that all different ways. You could bring the 1 to the other side. I'm not going to write it all those different ways. So if you see a problem and it's got a 1 in it, it has a cotangent squared in it, you want to be trying to look, look at number 2, right? Maybe there's a cosecant squared in there somewhere rearranged. And the third one uh, is tangent squared plus 1 equals secant squared. So if I see a problem that has a 1 in it and a tangent squared in it, I'm, I'm looking at identity number 3 to say, okay, maybe is there something there I can use, even if something's rearranged a little bit. Right, so Pythagorean identities are used a lot when you see powers of 2. Right? Not always, because we did have some problems yesterday that had exponents of 2. We didn't use any of those. Um, but today, when we see an exponent of 2, these are probably going to pop up somewhere. Okay, and then this, I think, yeah. So verify is what you guys basically had to do on the homework. Every single problem today is going to be a verify. Verify is, is a little easier because they give you what's on the left. They give you something on the right. So you already know the answer you're supposed to get. All you have to do is 
fix the left-hand side, simplify it, until you end up with what's on the right. Okay. If you get a problem that just says simplify, and they don't give you this, and it just said simplify, then you just got to keep going until you think you're done. Which is harder because sometimes you don't really know, am I, am I done? Should I, should I do more? Should I stop? Well, you're not going to have to worry about that today because you'll know you're done when you get sine squared in this problem. So that's basically what I write right here. All right, so verify, they give you what's on the left, they give you what's on your right, and your goal is to figure out and show how the two sides are the same. Now, always start with the more complicated side. Okay, because it's always easier to take something that's complicated and simplify it. Don't try to take something that's simplified like that and complicate it to look like the left. That's, that's harder to do. Take the complicated side and try to make it look simpler. Now, in most problems, it's going to be pretty clear which side is the more complicated side. You look at which side has more stuff. Now, if both sides look about the same, then it doesn't matter which side you start with. Okay, but I think uh, out of like the five examples we're going to do, four out of five, it's very clear which side is more common. It's got more stuff. Okay, but that's exactly what you did in the homework last night. So in all these problems, I'm not really looking for the answer. You, I'm going to give you the answer on every problem. I'm looking for the work in the middle. You got the first step, you got the last step. Show me the steps in the middle. All right, so any questions on, um, on that or the three Pythagorean identities before we uh, look at some examples? Okay, and that's the last group of identities I'm going to give you. Reciprocal, the tangent and cotangent, and Pythagorean. There's, there's hundreds more, but that's all that we do in this class. Probably thousands more. Okay, so verify. Um, just looking at that quickly, without thinking about it too much, which side looks more complicated, left or right? Left, yeah. Left is definitely way more common. It's got three trig functions in it. It's got subtraction, multiplication. The right-hand side is just a single trig function squared. Okay, so all the tricks that we know still apply. Change the sines and cosines. Um, find a common denominator. Com the common denominator one, that's the most annoying. Those problems take, take longer. Um, and the conjugate. Sometimes conjugate problems can take longer, too. But remember, common denominators and conjugates only come up in problems with fractions. I don't see any fractions in this problem to start. Doesn't mean we might not get fractions later on. Okay. But for now, there's no fractions. So you shouldn't be thinking conjugate. You shouldn't be thinking common denominator. So what's the only trick we can try um, to start this problem off? Um, yeah, change the sines and cosines. Right. So don't worry about what's well. What's going to happen after that? We don't know what's going to happen. After that. Let's just try it and then see if something else pops up and something good happens. Right. So just even if you're not sure where that's going to lead you, just try it. So <laughs> change everything to sines and cosines. So we have sine. I'm just going to make that a fraction. Um, Alyssa, what's cosecant? Uh, one first. One over sine. And then the second part already is cosine, so I'm just going to leave it alone. And I'm also not going to keep copying the right hand side. I'm just going to work with the left, and I know I'm done when I get what's on the right. Uh, so, Andrew, what's going to happen here? Everything's going to cancel out on the left. Uh, can you weigh everything? The, the sine over 1 and the 1 over sine. Yeah, so what are you left with? 1. Just 1. 
you're left with 1 divided by 1, which is just 1. 1 minus cosine squared. Now, does that look kind of like something here? 1 minus cosine squared. Um, Does that look like one of those? Well, look back at what's your trig function here? Cosine. Is there a cosine in number two? No. Number one. So one minus cosine squared looks kind of like number one, but it's number one rearranged. It's 1 minus cosine squared. I did the first one all the different ways you could write it, but look at what I wrote earlier. 1 minus cosine squared is equal to what? 1 minus cosine squared is sine squared. So this is sine squared. And the reason? It's Pythagorean identity number 1, but it's rearranged. And that's exactly what you were supposed to get, sine squared. Oh, that's it. So that's a Pythagorean identity problem, um, and it really had maybe three steps. Change to sines and cosines, cancel, and then use a Pythagorean identity. Any um, question on how I did that? And that's, that's an easier one. They, they, they build as we kind of go. They're not all hard, but there are some that are, that are harder. Okay, um, so sine times cotangent plus tangent. Somehow everything on the left is going to simplify and you're going to end up with just secant. Okay, so that's the goal. You want to get secant. When we get it, we're done. Brianna, which side looks more complicated here? Left. left definitely. So we're going to work with the left, do what we can. Um, Sebastian, any um, suggestion for what I try on the left? Um, wouldn't we want to get it to cosines and sines? Yeah, we're gonna get it. We're gonna change it to sines and cosines. And anyone else have a thought of what else I'm gonna do after that? I have to do these two things, and I think we did one kind of in the homework like this. We're gonna have to distribute again. I'll do one at a time, uh, but you gotta do both. So let's. Start with that. Sine times cotangent. That's the first part, sine times cotangent. And then the second part, copy down your plus, sine times tangent. Now remember, it doesn't matter what this is. It could be a theta, it could be an x, it could be a y. It's just a variable. That, that means you could plug any number you want into this formula and it would work. But we're not using numbers. All right, so I get that. Now I'm going to do the second part, um, which Sebastian said change the sines and cosines. Um, sine, I don't have to do anything to it, but I do want to make it a fraction. So I'm going to put it over 1. Uh, Courtney, how about cotangent? <laughs> I would do the cosine over sine. I'm not saying the 1 over tangent is wrong. It's just not going to really help you get anywhere in this one. Because what I'm already looking at is I see a sine in the top. I know that if I get a sine in the bottom, things are going to cancel. Right. So that's where I'm, I'm looking ahead to that next step. So cosine over sine. I'll come back to that. And now we have sine. I'm just going to put it over 1. And tangent, um, Anthony, what's tangent? What did you say it's in? Well, we're changing it to, what did Sebastian say to change it to? Sine over cosine? Sine, we're going to change it to sine over cosine. 
sine over cosine. All right. Now, can I cancel like this? Sine, sine. No. no, you cannot cancel across a plus sign. You can only cancel if you have two things multiplied, not, not added. But we do in the first part. Two things multiplied, so we can cancel that. Is there anything that cancels in the second one? No. No. So all we're left with in the first one is cosine over 1. If you want to just put cosine, you could, but I'm going to leave it over 1. You'll see why. Um, and then how about the second fraction? Yeah, what am I going to put after the plus sign? Sine squared. Yep, sine squared over cosine. <coughs> okay. So now let's think about the three basic tricks we have, change to sines and cosines. Would that work at this step? Why not? It already is. We already changed the sine and cosine. What's something else we can do after we've changed the sines and cosines? We've got fractions now, so that opens up more options. Yep. You can't cancel the cosines because that's across a plus sign. So no, no more. There is no more canceling at this step, but it's one of our other tricks we. Learn. Yep. Common denominator. Common denominator. Anytime you see two fractions that are separate, try to put them together and hope something good happens. Okay. If you do it right, something good will happen. Okay. Um, how do you find um, the common denominator? You just take the two denominators you have and do what? Multiply. Um, multiply them. each. Yeah, multiply each denominator together. So common denominator here is cosine. Now, I'm going to start with the second fraction. What do I have to do to the denominator in the second fraction to make it the common denominator? Hmm? Wait, so common denominator? Common denominator is cosine. Don't do anything. Second fraction already has the denominator I want, so I don't have to touch the numerator at all. Does the first fraction have the denominator that I want? No. Then you need to multiply by something to make it have the denominator you want. What would I multiply top and bottom by? Yep. Cosine. 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 Cosine times 1. All right. Here's your cosine. What's cosine times cosine? Cosine. Cosine squared. Okay. Test? Yeah. Thank you. Um, so now you've changed the sines and cosines. You found the common denominator. There's something there you need to recognize. There's something there that all simplifies and basically just cancels out. Yep. Is it the cosine squared and the sine squared? Yeah, cosine squared plus sine squared. Go back and look at this. Cosine squared plus sine squared is just a 1. So that whole top cancels out and becomes just 1. So now you have 1 over cosine. 1 divided by cosine is a name for that. What's the function you get when you flip the cosine? Yep. You get the secant. And if we scroll back up, <coughs> that's exactly what you were supposed to get. Secant. <coughs> so that's, that's the whole problem. So for that particular problem, I, I know I said there's always multiple ways to do it. You might come up with a different way, but I don't think you're going to come up with any shorter way. That, that's probably about as good as it gets for that problem. Okay. Any um, questions on that one? Because yeah, it, it had a lot of things in it. It had a distributive, change to sines and cosines, common denominator, a Pythagorean identity, and then a reciprocal identity. So there's really five, five different steps in there. Okay, so get this one. <coughs> so 
sometimes if I haven't done an identity in a long time, I look at it. <coughs> and I talk slowly. Because I'm not sure what's going to happen. So, I guess we'll just have to figure this out as we go. But somehow everything there is going to cancel out and become one. So it's all going to disappear. So, do we have two separate fractions at the moment? No. So common denominator shouldn't even be a thought. Uh, we don't have like a 1 plus a trig function or a 1 minus a trig function. We're going to have something like that in this one. That's when you want to think conjugate. Okay, when you have a fraction and you have a 1 minus, you try a 1 plus. Okay. I, don't, I don't have that here. So... The only thing I could really try is change to sines and cosines. Let's see what happens. So tangent is sine over cosine, and cotangent is cosine over sine. So I'm starting to see what's going to happen. What I'm debating is, do I want to change the secant and the cosecant to sines and cosines right now? Um, yeah, I think I do. So let's change it. Sometimes you change something and you just end up changing it back later. But I think it's, I think it's okay if we change it. So uh, what is secant? Yep. Cosine. 1 over cosine times what's cosecant? One, 1 over sine. One over sine. Okay, so yeah, obviously that looks a little worse now because we have all these fractions, but I don't think the bottom we can really do a lot with. Okay? It's just multiplying two things together. You don't need common denominators, so there's nothing to do here, but the top there is. You have two fractions, you're adding them, and they don't have the same denominator. So what could you try to do in the top? You got two fractions with different denominators. Find a common denominator. Okay, forget about the bottom. There's nothing you can do with it. Okay. Usually, addition is where you kind of want to focus. Addition or subtraction, because you can put that together as one thing. This already basically is one thing. Okay. Multiplication, there's, not, there's nothing else to do with it. All right. So, Isaiah, how did you tell us earlier to find the common denominator? Multiply, Multiply what? By the denominator. Multiply the denominators together. So, the common denominator here is this one on the left times this one on the right. It's going to be a cosine times sine. That's the common denominator. Now look what you have in the bottom, a cosine times a sine. So things are going to start to come together in the next, next step. Hey, do, is either one of these denominators, the one on the left or the one on the right, okay? Or do they both have to change? They, they both have to change. What do you have to multiply the top and the bottom by of the one on the left? Sine, the other denominator. Sine over sine. And what do you have to multiply the one on the right by? Cosine. 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 That's going to give you a common denominator of sine times cosine, sine times cosine, cosine times sine, sine times cosine, same thing. What's, um, how about, um, Riley, what's sine times sine? Sine squared. Sine squared. I like when I get sine squared because usually if you get a cosine squared, then it all turns into a one. So we're going to hope we get a cosine squared. So sine times sine, sine squared plus What's cosine times cosine? Cosine, cosine squared. Okay, 
And now I'm going to copy down um, what I have in the bottom. What I'm going to do though is I'm just going to put it all together. 1 times 1 gives me 1 in the top. Cosine times sine gives me cosine times sine in the bottom. Okay. And now I, I think I already said it, but in this fraction over a fraction, before you flip and multiply, what's going to simplify first? Yeah, this. What, what is sine squared plus cosine squared? One. One. So now, look what you have. One over cosine times sine divided by itself. One over cosine times sine. Now, I, I don't even think you need to flip and multiply. You're dividing two things that are the same. One over cosine sine, one over cosine sine. What do you always get when you divide two things that are the same? You get one. And that's what you were supposed to get. Okay, so that one, um, you know, kind of like middle difficulty. You had to you had to change the sines and cosines, find a common denominator, use a Pythagorean identity, and then you were done. So I actually think this one had less in it than. Than the last one. The last one had more stuff. I think it had five things you had to do. This one had about three. Four if you include dividing two things that are the same and getting one is the answer. Okay, so any question on that one? All right. Um, let's try this one. I don't think I asked this on the last problem. I just kind of assumed it. But um, which side looks more complicated here? Yeah, the left, definitely. What do you notice about the left-hand side? There's something special happening there. There's a name for these things, yeah? Um, well, it's multiplication, so it doesn't cancel. Like, if you had a plus sign here, then you'd have a minus one and a plus one would cancel out, and cosecant plus cosecant would be two cosecant. But since it's multiplication, we can't we can't cancel it. But you have a cosecant minus one, cosecant plus one. What are those called? Yeah, they're conjugates. Anytime you have conjugates, always multiply them together because something nice will always happen. Always. So foil those out, and watch watch what happens. What's um, cosecant times cosecant? Cosecant. Cosec what'd you say? Cosecant. Yeah, cosecant squared. Now you've got cosecant times plus one, cosecant times minus one. What happens there? Cancels out. So I don't even bother when I have conjugates. You don't have to foil the outer and the inner because they're gone. Cosecant plus one, cosecant minus one. That's zero. And now the last part, negative 1 plus 1. Multiply them together. Negative 1. So you have cosecant squared minus 1. Let's go back and look at this. Cosecant squared minus 1. Does that look like anything there? Yeah. Which one? Cosecant, CSC. You're looking for CSC. So number two, right? Kind of looks like number two. Is it exactly number two? Yeah. No, it's number two rearranged a little bit. If you minus the one and minus the one, you would have that. So what does it say cosecant squared minus one equals? It's cotangent squared. Cosecant minus 1 is cotangent squared because of Pythagorean identity number 2. So let's go back to our problem. Cosecant squared minus 1 is cotangent squared because of the identity I just showed you, and that's exactly what you were supposed to get. So when you have a problem with conjugates, sometimes you foil it, and it's done very, very quickly, like this one.
think that was probably the easiest or second easiest one for today. Any question on, on that? Where you would get stuck on this is if you said, oh, I'm going to change everything to sines and cosines first. Now it's, now it's a mess. Because now you're going to have 1 over sine minus 1, 1 over sine plus 1. And then you say, okay, now I'll foil it. But now you're foiling with all these fractions. It's, it's a mess. So when you see conjugates, foil it right away before you even try changing to sines and cosines. I'm not saying the other way wouldn't work. It would. It's just not, not as nice as that. Yeah. Let's look at this one. So it says to verify um, 1 minus sine over cosine equals cosine over 1 plus sine. Now, which side looks more complicated here? They're pretty much the same. I mean, you've got two trig functions on each side. They're both a sine and a cosine. You've got a single operation in either the numerator or denominator. One's add, one's subtract. And you've got division. They're, they're pretty much exactly the same. So you can start with either side. How about, uh, Gabe, which side do you want to um, start with? So, okay, so he said we're going to start with the right. So then our goal is going to be to take what's on the right and change it to what's on the left. Right. So just so we know which side we're doing, I'm just going to put right-hand side. Cosine over 1 plus sine. Okay, let's go through our... Are different ways to start the problem. Change to sines and cosines. Good idea, bad idea. It is sines and cosines. That's not going to work at all. How about um, two separate fractions find a common denominator? No, you don't have two separate fractions. Maybe you will later on, but right now you've got one fraction. So what's the only trick we have left? Yep, the conjugate. It's the only thing we can try. So. Always put that in parentheses so you remember to, um, to foil. And we're going to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate. What's the conjugate here? One minus sine. One minus sine. One minus sine. Now, This pattern of multiplying by conjugate, it comes up a lot. So this is one that I'm, I already know what's going to happen two steps from now. Because I know that, it's going to affect how I do this step right now. But how would you know that? You just get better at it when you practice them. So I do want to foil out what's in the bottom. But I don't want to distribute what's in the top, because technically that's a distributive. I don't want to do that right now. I could, but I just don't. Yeah. Leave it the same. And you'll see why in a second. And then, if you see a problem with this pattern in the future, try the same thing I'm showing you right now. That, that's how you'll know in the future. All right, so leave it as cosine, one minus sine. Let's do out the bottom. Okay, we'll start um, with 1 times 1. Uh, about, uh, Jason, what's uh, 1 times 1? Four. 1. 1 times negative sign, 1 times positive sign. Um, Sebastian, what happens there? I have no things to work. They um, become sign to the sign power. Uh, not yet, because we, well, what's 1 times negative sign? Negative sign. And what's 1 times positive sign? Sign. Positive sign. And what's a negative sign and a positive sign come out to? They cancel out. They cancel out. So that all becomes 0. So we don't have to worry about that. Now the last part is what you said. A positive times a negative is a negative. Sine times sine is sine squared. Now, does anybody recognize something there? Something we learned today. It's something, but it's rearranged a little bit. Yes? 
The first Pythagorean identity is in this problem. Where? Right here. 1 minus sine squared. Go back to the other ways I showed you how to rearrange it. It's actually circled for you. 1 minus sine squared is equal to what? Cosine squared. And now put that in the bottom and watch what happens. Yeah. Cosine times 1 minus sine, and the bottom becomes cosine squared. Do you have the same thing in the top and in the bottom? What? Cosines. How many cosines are in the top? One. How many are in the bottom? Two. So you can cancel one from the top, one from the bottom, and you're left with one minus sine over cosine. And if you scroll back up, the left-hand side is one minus sine over cosine. That's what they want. Had you started with the left-hand side, you would have multiplied top and bottom by one plus sine, and the same thing would have happened. It would have turned into the right side. Okay, so if you recognize that Pythagorean identity right there, you're good. It's not that hard. If you don't recognize that, then you're stuck. You're going to try all kinds of things, and you're just you're not going to get anywhere with it. Okay, any, uh, any questions on that one? Okay, so the problems I give you, they're really no more difficult than that. The difficult part is sometimes you just don't see something, or you make a mistake. So then what I want you to see isn't even in the problem anymore because you made a mistake. That, that's where you get messed up. Was the denominator supposed to be the denominator cosine squared? Yeah. And then when you cancel it, it just became regular right cosine? Yeah. Because if you want to think of it, this is cosine to the first, and the bottom is cosine to the second. Okay. So you can cross one cosine power out and one cosine power out there. Yeah. That's how we get that. Any uh, anything else on that one? Okay, um, so tonight, this homework is in the book. Um, and I think in numbers 9 through 14, they tell you what to do. All right? These are like the ones we did in class, 19 to 27, but skip 21. You don't have to do 21. It's an identity I didn't teach you. 9 through 14, though, are easier. They tell you, multiply by the conjugate. It's like they give you a hint at how to solve the problem. All right. uh, so I'll, I'll unlock the cabinet. You've got uh, about 25 minutes or so left. If you have to touch base with me about anything you're missing, or if you want to check your grade online and ask me questions about it, all your grades are updated, so you can ask me whatever you want to know about your grade. Yes? Why did it say I'll 21? Because I want you to skip it. Okay. Yes. Skip 21.